so last day we have discussed um, that the first um, means sorry in my last video not last day i have discussed about synchronous machine open circuit characteristics and also discussed about armature mmm and other things that are actually nothing just a extension of that generalized discussion which we had in our last semester in a particular case of a uh, synchronous machine now as we are discussing synchronous generator you must be uh, like today one student uh, probably hasan ansari kalim he was asking about uh, that uh, emf uh, like no not emf uh, about armature reaction compensation how much it is similar to dc machine and how it is different from dc machine it was his query now let me ask you a more uh, straightforward and simple question that is uh, my question to you is as synchronous machine is a synchronous generator do you think synchronous generator we can have a provision of counter torque or back emf if yes then which one we can realize in case of an alternator and how to express it by means of a numerical formula or something okay so in short circuit characteristics what we do uh, like i have uh, explained the circuit probably um, we solidly short all the three phases like if this is just let me draw a very crude uh, representation of it a very uh, free and and crude diagram of the schematic of synchronous machine so we short the three phase winding well one student has asked me a question personally um, that is uh, whether in case of a short circuit winding can we have uh can we have zero sequence component like third harmonic current component flowing through our winding so in case of the, oh, well the, no not for this short circuit this is a first of all try to understand this is a symmetrical short circuit like uh, you have solidly short all the three terminals of your phase winding uh, uh, she was not asking about this particular case her query was uh, something different like if we break connection of one phase and short the other two phase so then what would happen it was her query so basically she was asking that if this is my stator connection let us consider a star connected stator for ease of understanding then can we have a zero sequence current component flowing uh, through these windings it was her question so i would like to know your view on this because you are already in your fourth semester uh, means uh, you have already completed almost uh, say 40% of your btech course so uh, means 
you must be aware of these uh, very subtle things like if we shot the two face uh, then what would happen about the winding collection anyway mm, uh, it was a query and I would like to know the answer from your end with obviously your justification for your answer anyway let us consider the symmetrical case so in this symmetrical case what we will have think about it first of all let me describe the procedure what we do here is that this is the armature what we do we connect it then we allow the machine to run at its rated speed and then we vary this is our felt winding current here it is uh, DC current mind it DC current is flowing through the winding so we allow flow of DC current through my winding and adjust the magnitude of this DC current to such an extent that it ensure flows of say say uh, flows of 125 to 150% of full load current through your winding correct this like the case of open circuit voltage in case of open circuit voltage we used to adjust the current so we can have a voltage that is 125 percent of normal voltage and here it is 125 to 150 percent uh, mind it uh, that in case of open circuit voltage we mention 125 but here we can go up to 150 without any harm and without uh, much problem why first of all as I have already uh, told you probably at least 10 times that we design a machine near the knee point of the magnetizing characteristics if you are not aware of the knee point let me show you one card like if you you must be uh, must understand the term knee point but even if you are not sure of that term let me just uh, show you uh, what I am trying to mention by that knee point mm. yeah so this is actually the knee point so we design our uh, system in such a manner that it must be uh, near the knee point of your system nominal voltage like uh, this machine probably it was designed for 11 kilovolt line so you can understand that around knee point you will have near about 3800 and you, sorry, this machine was a 66 kilovolt machine, and if you see that uh, if you have a 60 uh, 6.6 .6 kilovolt machine, then this is somewhat where your phase voltage become 3.8 kilovolt. Right? This is the voltage per phase you can see here. So this is what I was trying to mean by knee point. So uh, still this it is almost linear but after this you can see a uh, means tangible change in the slope of that line. Anyway, so now what uh, is there that obviously beyond that you can go but you need to circulate a very high amount of current through your field winding if you try to reach 150 so generally we limit ourselves between for open voltage open circuit voltage test 100 110 to 125 
we never try to 125. Now, in case of current, I will explain that why there is, uh, we never encounter saturation and obviously one question may come in your mind that uh, if we allow flow of 150% current that is so high as 1.5 times of nominal current, it may cause uh, damage or means uh, lead, uh, result in a burnt winding. But let me make it very clear to you, generally we always design a machine with a safety factor. So what is that safety factor? We always go for a kind of overhead design. What is that overhead design? In industry, we always supply people that, well, if I rate the machine for say 1 kilo ampere, it must tolerate at least 1.5 kilo ampere current. Now, if you go to 2 kilo ampere, then I cannot take or means I cannot ensure uh, any uh, means my machine, uh, whatever I have manufactured, will uh, uh, means can sustain that high current, but till 1.5 kilo ampere it should sustain, otherwise, customer will or whoever will be there to procure from you will go to some other manufacturing uh, party uh, because safety is a very key term in industry because there is a uh, lot of machines work together. And now try to understand one thing that when you are uh, doing things individually it becomes difficult as well as easy. Why difficult? Because uh, then you are responsible for everything and uh, like but at the same time you yourself receive input from the system and deliver output to the system but when you work in a group like consider a group project so if two three people uh, performs uh, uh, means Poorly, then the like it is a kind of uh, a cricket match. If a few player fails to perform, then the whole team performance will be affected in the due course. So here also, uh, every time we put a machine in a system that is uh, that comprises a lot of interconnecting uh, machines. So. There, safety does matter. Like, if you have only one machine, then you can be very uh, means careful with that operation of that machine. Like in your household, safety uh, it is uh, very unlikely that uh, means you can have a dangerous high voltage or high current because all your or most of your uh, electrical appliances, although they in a parallel manner, but still you can uh, consider their operation as standard. Like you do not have two fans who, who, who are both input output side couple, it is not like that. Especially not uh, output couple fan you do not have. But generally in industry what we have uh, do for ensure better reliability, we couple many systems in parallel. And whenever we try to connect systems in parallel, like uh, if you apply um, your common sense, you will understand that if I want to connect two synchronous generator in parallel, we must ensure equal winding factor. We cannot tolerate a different winding factor or even if there is a difference in winding factor, that must not uh, exist a certain tolerance band otherwise it will cause a catastrophe why it will cause a catastrophe if you are really interested you will find the answer by yourself and you may get it verified from me uh, somebody is texting just mm. uh, oh, oh, oh. Mm, no. so 
one more thing here that is very important uh, what I am trying to tell you about we have discussed over design now in, uh, uh, in this case in this short circuit condition your V is 0 and therefore what would happen to our uh, phasor diagram uh, that we had here yeah what would happen here if we make v is equal to 0 so the, the whole thing will reduce to something like this uh, let me try to draw the phasor diagram you will have only e and as uh, you will have only e present we can draw it like uh, means it is almost impossible to draw this phasor diagram but we can just uh, uh, means go for a hypothetical construction because it is difficult very difficult to draw uh, because you do not have any access to your reference um, phase voltages and um, however if we consider E is uh, this much then we can draw the current I and as the winding of the machine is quite uh, what to say that it's very very inductive in nature with uh, dominant uh, value of, of your inductive uh, reactance we can draw the phasor diagram with this one the j i x l and this one being i r right and obviously this part is your i and if that is the case then uh, you will have your armature reaction that is collinear with your i and how we can actually get uh, the e naught here that obviously we can figure out the position of resultant flux fr that is here what is this fr this is responsible for production of e and being the cause for that is uh, responsible for production of e it should lead e by an angle of 90 degree and uh, this one uh, this if are this uh, must be as we are assuming linear relationship it must be uh, in 90 degree leading uh, the phasor E then we need to add minus A with this and if we add we will get if not and obviously you can draw a proportional uh, E naught here there is no harm you can draw E naught here and then, and then you join them to find J I X A the interesting things here is to note that this E uh, what you can write about this E see uh, if there is no saturation then uh, how all uh, this proportional relationship works what from what uh, means uh, like what are the factors involved in this relationship to be very precise if you keep the other constructional features aside or means the not aside relate them uh, let us consider them constant if you uh, do that then you will get we can write this e is equal to some constant c into omega r sorry uh, uh, let us omega r or let it be omega s that represent the synchronous reactance uh, sorry not synchronous reactant is the synchronous speed omega s into fr is the 
resultant magnetic field. Now, as this one, uh, you can further write it like I square R square plus This is the magnitude wise representation. Now see, IR is considerably uh, means very very small in comparison with I square X square. Let me do another simplification that would help you to understand it clearly. Like here, you can see that it basically reduces to r square by x square. Now, if you consider this r by x for a machine that is uh, economically designed, that for that machine, r by x will be very, very small. And what happens when you take the square value of any number that is less than 1? Suppose you take the square of 0.3, it would give you 0 0.09. That means squaring up a number that is less than 1 will result in a number that is re uh, less than the initial one. Right? So, r by x, uh, this whole square root can be summed up like this whole thing is approximately equal to 1 because you are uh, now having something that is like mm, say a very small number. Now why if you take the square root of something like let me show you if I take square root of 1.0 0 uh, to 5 then what would happen just allow me a minute to calculate it will give you something like 1.00 one two four nine so if you uh, keep on means uh, like uh, approximation if you want to take up to three or four decimal point then you will see it will become while if you take a uh, four decimal approximation or means even uh, uh, 3 decimal approximation you will have 1.03 over here because due to this pipe this will become 1.003 you cannot drop it but this is very close to 1 after you take the square root it becomes very close to 1 so uh, undoubtedly this will uh, we can write it like this one is approximately equal to uh, this is our Excel to be very precise. Excel square. Right. Now, more, uh, if you uh, observe minutely, then you will understand that on which factor, more precisely, which factor this Excel depend. This Excel, isn't it? that this excel is also dependent on omega s the synchronous frequency or rather to say synchronous speed in radian per second because that synchronous speed if you understand synchronous machine correctly try to uh, listen to me carefully that this synchronous speed is governing the frequency of induced EMF and this uh, speed of rotation of your synchronous machine rotor is actually responsible for governing the reactance value of 
all the reactance is present in your electrical circuit. Because reactances, whether it is an inductive reactance or capacitive reactance, they have to depend on the frequency of the supply or of the associated waveform. And here, if you consider the at least the fundamental one, as because as of now we are dealing with the linear assumption, that is uh, therefore we can discard the uh, means. Uh, discard the harmonic related issues and we are having one fundamental frequency and that frequency is only governed by the speed of rotation of rotor that is omega s well me is already related to omega s and now we can write that this one this one is also related to your uh, means uh, what to say uh, that um, this one is related to your omega s so we can write this one is sorry, sorry, sorry. this should be as we have taken it out of square some other constant let us make it Now do note that this omega s it is uh, depending on this. Therefore, what you can consider that as long as your this product and uh, obviously try to understand that. Uh, so what you will have here, you will have. Uh, and also uh, uh, like okay well there is one more fact that we need to consider here like we can write this uh, if r is equal to if not uh, plus a so Uh, like here uh, uh, a plot plus a so what we would have here we will have here that is k1 i f right now uh, one more thing here to note uh, this derivation is not going to be very easy to be very honest <laughs> because your um, this uh, armature reaction it is um, it mainly comprises of the inductive part of your circuit so what we can write that this we can write like Undoubtedly, this is uh, we can write uh, like k to i, but if you consider it, you will see that uh, this k to i, it uh, it is like what we can write. Let me uh, make it very clear to you: is that we can have i c to omega s l a minus k to i sorry minus k2 is equal to k1 i f right now uh, if we go further with this k1 i f you will see that there will also this k1 i f don't you think that we can write it like e naught is equal to c1 omega s f naught because both of them should maintain 
same proportionality constant with the MMF responsible for their production. So this one, if we can write this, so we can write it here also instead of uh, writing IF or even if we write it in terms of IF because IF is realizable while F0 is a matter of calculation. So let us change this constant to C1 dash omega s if not. Well, that's good. Now, uh, what, sorry, uh, omega, uh, not instead of F0, let us, uh, yeah, that is why I bring it C1 dash omega s i if fine. Well, now uh, what remains, what I am interested to show you, like, um, see, this is uh, almost uh, only approximation as of now I have made is that, um, just let me check whether it's recording or not, otherwise all these, uh, uh, yeah. So, I have made as of now is that R is very very less than, uh, very very smaller than XL for uh, means considerable amount of speed variation of omega s from its nominal value uh, to both the side like uh, to the higher side or to the lower side it is uh, giving us XL is considerably uh, greater than your R which makes this approximation possible. Now um, what I want to show you that is a very simple thing. Let me make one more approximation. What is that approximation? That instead of Considering it as k to i, you can see that this a and this minus a and f naught, they are uh, even uh, if I draw slightly uh, means diagram in a uh, means more scaled manner, it was just a rough freehand drawing, then you would understand that you uh, are taking this assumption and then if you are ready to drop this i r what type of i you think that will flow through your circuit more you reduce i r uh, means r your i will be more uh, in quadrature with your E and effectively what would happen that A whatever you will have here and E will uh, becoming J I X L right and uh, what you would have here that if not if not will be like this only. Obviously, this is an approximated diagram. It is, uh, but this approximation is just a direct consequence of this one. So, instead of writing it as K2i, here what I can write, I can write it like another constant. Uh, that is negative in nature or whatever k2 obviously k2 must be a negative constant of i f so if we do that then what we will have we need a new constant say c2 dash omega s i f now see we have reached a very very important and interesting conclusion where we just assume that for a considerable speed variation, ohm R is very, very uh, uh, like very, very 
small and Excel is considerably dominating in your circuit. The circuit is mainly inductive and that is what uh, allows us to discard this term from the whole equation and uh, gives us this liberty to consider this one. And then after taking this, what we are having, we are having something like both side. Now you see like both side, they are forming a constant line. Now that is very, very important and that is why in case of short circuit test, uh, what you get uh, more precisely if you want to identify this current as the short circuit current, I can write it IS, see here to make it more clear you that this one is like you are having a constant relationship. Another important, very important conclusion is that for a considerable speed variation, your short circuit current has nothing to do with the speed speed of your machine for a wide range of speed variation your short circuit current only depends on your high f that is the field current although if you want to conduct the short circuit test you should maintain the uh, rated speed or rotation of the machine at rated speed to ensure better accuracy but you are means even if you fail to maintain it you won't get a tangible variation but in case of open circuit test if you fail to maintain this you will have a uh, very drastic you will be able to observe a drastic change in your uh, what to say in your uh, means result now um, this is what all about short circuit test what i said that it is really demagnetizing in nature i think i have answered all uh, this now uh, even we can have a card like this where you can see you will get a card like this This test we have conducted for a constant field current. Here this is the rated speed for any industrial means designed machine you can see that here So you can see that for a considerable range, it almost remains constant. And if your rated speed is 1500, it is clear from that diagram, although it is a rough 300 diagram, but um, means at least till 700 RPM, you will have a pretty constant uh, value of short circuit current for a 
constant field current flowing through your uh, rotor winding. Right. Now we will discuss another very very important topic or rather very important concept that is short circuit ratio. What is that short circuit ratio? Short circuit ratio of asynchronous machine is defined as the ratio of in short we defined it as SCR short circuit ratio ratio of field current required to produce rated voltage during open circuit condition to the field current required to produce rated short circuit current so this is a quite clear description now uh, uh, diagrammical if we want uh, representation what we will have we will have our curve like this for our voltage let this be Vn and And here we are having uh, the what to say that let us take the normalized voltage I by I in. So This I by I n is actually represented in per unit value. Now what we are having here, this one is our field current and as I discussed that 
you will get almost a straight line variation for your um, uh, for your field current actually uh, um, actually both of them like vn and this per unit value of current i by i a both of them uh, they are rather both of their variation are recorded with respect to the same uh, independent variable that is the field current i a while uh, maintaining the speed of rotation of our machine constant and then we are trying uh, to plot them as we have recorded or we have obtained the recording of both the dependent variable with respect to the variation of a single independent variable so uh, we use a same graph paper but instead of representing variation between two quantities here we will take three quantities one is the independent variable if and other two dependent variable vn and i by in they are represented in vertical scale while the variation of the independent variable is represented in horizontal scale well now see this one is like uh, this is our rated current required to produce the rated short circuit current and this is the amount of field current required to produce our rated voltage. So if we consider this as IFSC and this as IFOC your short circuit is, uh, ratio is correct now now uh, this we can show that what we are having here is uh, responsible for uh, is responsible for uh, production of our that is our SCR. Now this SCR or the short circuit ratio is our, it is our saturated SCR. If we want to take the unsaturated SCR, then we should draw a tangent to this line. And accordingly, we will have this IFOCEU by IFSC is the SCR at unsaturated condition now if this is your rated voltage then if you uh, similarly express it in per unit scale what you will have here you will have 1.0 for this right now uh, this is your uh, voltage being expressed in per unit now what about per unit synchronous reactance uh, 
or even synchronous impedance if you want to say. Right. Now see that if you uh, consider them, yeah, it is interesting to note that as this region is a uh, uh, means this much uh, like if you consider this uh, uh, let me write O A B C D E so let me take first this triangle this O D C and another triangle that is O E B right so if you take this O D C and O E B basically your uh, S C R is what it is the ratio of O B and O C now see that uh, being two similar triangle uh, like O O O O uh, B uh, means like what I was trying to say that it is your this one he is how much this is correct now see these two triangles are a similar triangle this OEB and ODC so if they are similar triangle what we can write this one is, is equal to how much this one is, is equal to EB by your DC however interestingly the value of DC is 1 as per the scale value of DC is 1 so we can write it is only EB correct so, oh, SCR in saturated condition is EB. So what is EB if you uh, try to analyze it further then EB is in uh, terms of some voltage right. Now uh, it is our goal to establish a relation between our synchronous impedance and uh, that with our EB. So, uh, what about per unit synchronous impedance? Per unit synchronous impedance we can write is equal to how much? That is the actual value of synchronous impedance divided by your rated voltage Vn by In. Now, uh, this Vn by In, if you do it, what you will get, this one will result you, it is like, uh, this Zs, you can write it like, uh, this Vn and In are the rated values, this Zs, you can write it like, Uh, means a ratio between P and I now see if you do it 
what it will lead you it will give you that it is actually from this trigonometry you can solve easily very easily that it is 1 upon eb that is 1 upon scr so your uh, uh, means per unit impedance synchronous impedance is just uh, means sharing a reciprocal relationship or means just uh, inversely proportional with your uh, short circuit ratio saturated short circuit ratio obviously saturated short circuit ratio uh, you can uh, see here that uh, saturated short circuit ratio is somewhat higher than that unsaturated short circuit ratio now what is the uh, means physical interpretation of short circuit ratio it is a very very important factor why because the field um, MMA uh, actually what it indicates it indicates your field MMA that required to produce rated current at short circuit is uh, like you can understand that if your short circuit ratio is small then what does it indicate if you uh, go back to today's lecture, you will see that uh, during short circuit test, our uh, system means the synchronous machine behaves almost like a linear system. There is no scope of saturation and others come in the picture. So, what we can say that our system it is uh, proportional to uh, this like the short circuit current is proportional to field current right now if it is the case then it is interesting to note that if you have high value of sorry a small value of SCR that means your armature reaction is very very high because if your, if your armature reaction is very high then what would happen it will strongly demagnetize your, your field MMA and uh, that is not desirable why not desirable because having a high armature reaction is no way desirable because that gives you an indication of your motor characteristics, uh, sorry, machine characteristics. Uh, you can argue that, oh well, uh, we can uh, say compensate armature reaction, this, that. But still, uh, see this, how to uh, make you understand this is very interesting things, but you need to feel by yourself. Means, uh, one thing that is very important here is that when you are doing short circuit test you are actually not applying anything from the outside or you are not collecting any other external system with your machine so it is an inherent and very own characteristics of your machine in case if you connect any other load that is a different issue but when your machine is in uh, so having a poor short circuit ratio is no way desirable generally uh, for high speed turbo alternator we try to maintain it between 0.6 to 0.9 and for low speed salient pole machine it uh, generally lies in the range between 0.9 to 1.5 correct now one thing
thing that is very very interesting here is that uh, means this is a very interesting thing to note that why why it is so means why we are so obsessed with this uh, means in other way we can say that a machine with small value of uh, synchronous reactance is good are we trying to say something like this if yes then you may be able to establish a logical connection or means logical uh, what to say uh, like both are uh, you will find a cogency in that. You will see here it is interesting to note that a part of your or a major part of your synchronous impedance is committed by or means is uh, offered by your armature reaction your synchronous impedance namely it has got two part one is one armature resistance the other two is your leakage reactance and armature reaction reactance now these two together forms synchronous uh, means reactance armature reaction and uh, reactance and leakage reactance they together form synchronous reactance so this synchronous reactance with armature resistance forms synchronous impedance. This synchronous reactance is very very important and we want a, not a very large value of synchronous reactance. So I hope it makes some sense. Now we will go to uh, study zero power factor characteristics. In zero power factor characteristics, first let me describe the arrangement. In zero power factor characteristics, what we do? Uh, it is a characteristics that determine uh, what to say armature reaction MMA and leakage armature leakage uh, reactance. Like you can get a uh, separate I mean, you can find them separately from the zero power factor characteristics in this test what we do we allow our machine to run at its rated speed and we connect a purely inductive load with our a balanced three phase purely inductive load with our machine terminal. Now we will increase the field current till we can get a full load current is flowing through our uh, means that inductive load. Thereafter what we do we slightly vary that load in steps and then we keep record of armature terminal voltage and field current. There is no need to take care of your uh, means, means uh, not take care of rather uh, no need to take record of your armature current because you are in this test obliged to keep it at its rated value. So you should start from your short circuit condition where the external reactance value is zero means whatever you have connected. Then gradually you go on increasing L, L, L and you observe for each increase um, or means in other way you uh, 
means offer a higher amount of reactance to your machine terminal and whenever you change the machine terminal loading what you need to do you need to increase the field current to ensure flow of current through that uh, let me uh, draw the diagram i hope what i described uh, you, if you do not spend time with your uh, mobile or any other amusement things uh, then you must have understood what I tried to mean by that description this is our machine If you are looking for uh, arrangement, uh, experimental setup, then you need to insert one ammeter just to check or make sure that you are always having a constant flow of current through your zero power factor load. Well, now here uh, generally we uh, do not get such kind of pure inductive load. So what we do, we uh, just make sure that pure inductive load is not possible for us to realize. What we do, we connect a synchronous machine and vary its excitation how to realize that zero power factor we will describe once we uh, discuss about synchronous motor you will get more idea on that but for the time being you just assume that they are you are having a pure inductive load and that load is variable in nature you can vary the load in steps and whenever you will vary the load in steps what will happen obviously this ammeter current will vary but it is your objective to keep this current constant so how you will do it you will vary the field current even if you do not understand let me make you understand by saying this you are having one circuit like this Here you are having a variable voltage source and you are, you are having a variable rheostat. Your target is to keep this constant. So once this one is short circuited, let us consider we have some, this is, uh, this voltage source is having some internal uh, resistance so once you get to it short circuited you will see it will allow say 5 ampere current is flowing through when r is equal to 0 now you make r is equal to 1 so for r is equal to 0 you just need uh -huh, the voltage is how much voltage you need to generate that is the voltage to overcome the internal resistance of the battery then you make it r is equal to 1 you need 5 volt plus internal drop for that 5 ampere and uh, 
this internal drop remains constant because you are obliged to make it constant 5 ampere so internal drop plus 5 volt then you make it to here you will get 10 volt but at the same time this one must be 10 plus internal drop so here this voltage variation first you are varying the load and then you are varying the field current and obviously after every uh, means variation of your steps you need to wait certain time so basic bridge in new steady state condition do remember that field winding is a very means uh, even if you can vary the current means it takes certain time to build its uh, uh, means even if that truly represent that current well, so you must allow it for that for the settlement of transit and then you can um, go for it now uh, here in this zero power factor characteristics uh, so we will vary this uh, and the phasor diagram if you ask me to draw it is also very different uh, type of phasor diagram you will get if this is your V this is your I then you will have your I R and a uh, considerable amount of J I X A And this one is your E and for that E you need if R perpendicular to that E a constant armature reaction that is minus E and so it is clear that they are almost uh, means amateur reaction is demagnetizing in nature and you are having this kind of diagram obviously here it is plus a now see it is interesting to note that sorry mm, this is uh, jxl and if we further then we will get this is the dot this one is j i x a s so what we are actually varying here it is interesting to note that let me mark the variable phasor here or let me mark the constant phasor then it will make help you to understand list of variable phases Well, so I hope you understand. 
So the rest of the factors say that like P is variable because P Y V is varying because you have to vary the load and V is just the voltage that you can measure across the load. So if you increase the load, obviously V will increase like that battery. Five volt, ten volt, you will always get across that uh, variable resistor. So similarly here, you will get variable V and this uh, E or better to say E naught. You can consider that it is something like constant drop plus that uh, voltage across load uh, variable load resistor. Uh, so when it was 5 volt across resistor now you will have inside that is 5 plus internal drop but internal drop remains same because your current through the load that remains same so when you increase the value of that resistor to 2 ampere 2 volt uh, sorry 2 ohm then it becomes 10 plus internal drop Generally, increasing load by the term load uh, means increasing load. What we mean generally, uh, we try to mean uh, it like when you reduce or means when you discard the or rather when you cause a reduction of your effective load resistance that we understand by the common term uh, load increasing if i ask you to increase the load on a motor or machine uh, sorry or on a generator or battery you should decrease the load resistance because in that case you consider that your uh, supply is constant however here the supply is variable you intentionally vary it so here if I ask you to increase the load that means here you have to increase the value of the load impedance or load reactance because we are considering a zero power the load so load reactance you have to increase. So with this uh, if I want to draw a diagram what type of diagram we will get we will get a very typical diagram for obviously we need to draw it for between field excitation and your voltage so if you get your open circuit characteristics like this what would happen for zero power factor characteristics obviously the zero power factor characteristics due to the constant demagnetizing effect of armature reaction it will you will get things like this a parallel curve in saturation region things will uh, slightly change why? Because in that region, when it gets saturated, it is still not saturated because you are having uh, that one, that demagnetizing action. So, uh, what is this value can anyone cons uh, tell me what is this value this is the uh, amount of field current you need 
to circulate short circuit current through your uh, during your short circuit test this is our zero power factor characteristics or correct now if you take any uh, value so this is what is your uh, means you can say this is my uh, something that is uh, responsible for arbitrary reaction uh, now one thing we can do here is that you do not know how good you are in geometry but obviously now we have to be more uh, means receptive and uh, be very like what I am going to do you must understand uh, very clearly because this is a uh, very important concept here now see once we reach a point here say this is a particular field current that ensure that if you apply this much field current through our circuit field winding better to say rotor winding your armature voltage will reach this much this is our rated armature voltage this is our rated field current now uh, one interesting things you can say that uh, can't we slide this whole length and we can figure out the corresponding value of uh, means armature reaction here uh, but it is um, means instead of doing that obviously armature reaction remain constant uh, but there are certain factors come into play when you go for something that is uh, like when you start considering uh, things that are responsible for your what to say your leakage reactance drop and other things so it is not that easy that to slide this IFSC and get it uh, but we are somewhat fortunate that we know a formula which can help us to determine the armature like armature uh, total um, MMA uh, produced by our armature and if we can figure out that armature MMA let me show you uh, by means of some example uh, just a minute yes uh, as I have discussed that for uh, three phase case it is like the fundamental armature reaction MMA is how much it is uh, your A is like uh, perhaps that formula was point nine into n where n is the number of turn into i armature uh, now we are keeping this i armature constant into kb kp where kb is your breadth factor and kp uh, is your pitch factor uh, or you can write it like kw that is winding factor right now here the, if you keep this one constant then what you are going to get here is something that is uh, 
this much will result in and means okay now obviously you need to counterbalance this much by a minus a and that minus a has to be supplied by your field uh, mma so what is that field mma if you recall the field mma equation was for if we consider that kind of straight dc uh, that rotor conductor electric loading we can have it like 4 pi uh, 4 by pi then n z i f by 2 into kw this kw or uh, let me more precisely write it is kw s and this is kw r long back i uh, discussed that so i forgot what type of subscript uh, or uh, symbols i have used but this kw s is your stator winding factor kw r is rotor winding factor please listen to me very carefully otherwise you are going to miss many important things that you may not be able to get in uh, many of the books or means at least in a single place you won't get so that is why it is very important for you to mind this discussion and try to understand it uh, clearly right obviously this is for uh, per phase and if you consider the total one then you must need to multiply it by three times this is for per phase well now one more thing I would like to make it very very clear here that it is uh, how it comes uh, well now uh, think about that how this one could be transferred to I the um, amount of uh, this one is like this A is produced by your armature and here we can have this one is responsible for production of minus A to counterbalance this. Now if you uh, see this uh, here this uh, section then from this you can calculate and straight away uh, you, uh, you can reach to a conclusion that if we can as we are keeping armature current constant throughout the experiment so uh, we need a constant amount of field current to produce this minus a that statement is correct however here whatever current you are flow uh, allowing flow of the current through your car kit is not only counterbalancing the armature reaction mmm but it is also responsible for overcoming the armature leakage reactance and drop due to armature leakage reactance and uh, drop due to armature resistance. Even if we consider just uh, to means make the calculation slightly uh, simplified, if we assume that even in case of short circuit test, the armature reaction is purely demagnetizing in nature, still what you have left with that is here this one is not only the demagnetizing component or it is not only responsible for production of minus A plus it needs a certain component 
that is f r correct now obviously one question all will comes in your mind that whatever it we are having here for production of that that drop also remains same as i have mentioned then why can't we say that or can't we figure out that means just by drawing a straight line why can't we say that okay one more thing here i would like to mention that is very important to note so this one is very interesting that even the drop women say the other factor that is very crucial and we should not forget it about that is the nonlinear nature of our saturation uh, means of our magnetic circuit so uh, this is going to be very very interesting so anyway uh, means this one is so fascinating and i mean enticing i will uh, means i can speak 2 3 hours on this particular topic but uh, like uh, here whenever i start discussing this i feel i have to, uh, lot more things to discuss and to learn and to understand because this circuit is very fascinating but anyway uh, let us keep it short like what i was trying to tell that this is your since this is a balanced circuit we are going for a part phase representation this is your part phase rated armature voltage this is your uh, rated armature means armature reaction mmf produced by a rated armature current flowing through a pure inductive load and from that you can calculate actually the amount of if that is required and uh, in this scale also we can find out the value of a so what we can do is that if we uh, just draw a line that is parallel to our horizontal axis okay let me use some other color to make it clearly understandable that is here so if we uh, this is our a clearly this is not equal to this ifsc because yeah. Uh, the A is somewhat less or rather minus A is somewhat less than IFSC anyway so this much A what you need to uh, compensate now if you uh, if you apply this much A you know, like when you deal with open circuit then this uh, let us let us uh, consider this as i if uh, rated hmm. and this is i if rated minus a or uh, this point let me clearly write it otherwise you will not understand This minus IF A means the amount of IF that you calculate from this A. So this is at the point. Now for this point you can find out the value of voltage that will be induced across your open circuit. Money. First you reduce this one. And then after uh, like in case if you deal with an 
open circuit then the you don't need this much a so this much e now if we are we are interested that in case of open circuit test uh, what voltage this much field current will produce what field current we are investigating for the value of field current that is uh, that we are getting from the rated field current minus the rated armature reaction mmf equivalent field current that gives us this point and then we go straight and get this point so what is this drop is representing this drop if we neglect the iar then this drop is basically in give us the drop due to ixl means if we consider r is equal to 0 then this drop is due to ixl and this triangle uh, it is you can say it is like mm, if you consider it PQ this NPQ this triangle is known as OTR triangle while its base represent the armature reaction MMF at full load current and its height represent the armature uh, leakage reactance voltage drop at full load current as we are doing this experiment at full load current so this always remain constant now this is the Potier triangle it is very important uh, this Potier triangle once you construct Potier triangle you can separate the drop uh, in this way that you are having how much uh, is your means your uh, synchronous impedance is somewhat you can measure right but once you have measured your synchronous reactance it is very important for you to understand that how much is responsible for armature reaction reactance because in EMF method what you do you are actually representing a virtual EMF drop uh, like if we go back to that uh, diagram you will understand here you can see that this EMF this is uh, the entire EMF drop is not actually across any physical EMF rather we have to actually representing a uh, leakage due to means leakage MMF and also armature reaction MMF we are replacing them or not replacing we are actually trying to representing them by means of EMF that is why it got the name EMF method your minus A is a physical MMF your F0 is physical MMM, FR is physical MMM, but try to understand that they are doesn't exist any physical EMM represented by the line CD or even you can say BD. This BD, the line represented by this MMM, uh, EMM is purely uh, means uh, means it is not a physical one just for representation you can represent it but it is it 
doesn't exist in reality if you consider the IMF CD or they do not exist in reality if you consider the IMF BD. What exists in reality is the EMF that you will get if you join uh, point B with point O. That is the origin of the phasor with B. That is voltage across your load terminal or output terminal plus drop across your armature resistance. That is a physical MMM, measurable physical MMM that exists. But here in this EMF method, what you do, you represent a MMM by means of a few physical uh, a few physical MMM by means of a few virtual EMF. That is why it is uh, this method has earned its name that EMF method. Now, oh, okay. So here, this is our Portier triangle. So, how can we construct this Portier triangle? It is very easy. Uh, either you need to experimentally construct two curves. One is uh, your short circuit. Uh, means open circuit characteristics curve and another one is your zero power factor characteristics curve once you construct these two curves then at rated field current that rated field current means the current uh, that when you allow the flow of that much current through your field winding produces rated um, voltage during open circuit condition so for that particular field current, you have to subtract the field current that is equivalent to a full load armature reaction MMM. Then you will get the point uh, that is shown by Q. Means P is the point that is uh, that corresponds to the field current. Uh, means the voltage which you will get on your zero power factor characteristics due to rated field current flowing through your field winding then from that P if you draw a line that is parallel to your horizontal line or IF line and magnitude wise it is equal to your full load armature reaction MMM then that gives us another point Q. Now for that Q, that Q if you draw a line perpendicular on your IF from that point Q, you will get a point that indicates if you allow uh, flow of this much current, then what like you will get a current that is IF rated minus IF uh, corresponding to that full load armature reaction of this point. Now for that you find out your open circuit induced voltage that is shown by N. Then you uh, join the three points N, P and Q to form your Portier triangle. So this is one method. Uh, another one method we can have is that we can construct this zero power factor characteristics from our existing one like uh, from uh, without uh, means experimentally constructing the zero power factor from Portier triangle we can do it how we can do it let us uh, try to understand that like what we can uh, do here is that We can say this is point. Let these two be curve. One is a curve denoted by uh, C naught, and another curve is C naught dash. And let us draw a circle that is centered here. Let us call this point as. Uh, 
call this point as O. This is our C naught. C naught dash. Now on this O, here it is your MMF required to allow flow of full uh, short circuit uh, during short circuit condition. Let it be F naught. Then we can draw a circle with radius this much like this. Well, once you draw this circle, then what you can do is that uh, like uh, you now just uh, well, this point is needed. Now, what you do is that you uh, just try to shift this circle uh, in such a way that this line like moves uh, parallel uh, to this. However, one point is needed that is the point P. Uh, means you do not need to construct the full zero power factor characteristic curve experimentally like by stepwise variation how you construct the to be you have to vary it uh, vary, uh, you have to first you have to find out a variable zero power factor load and then by varying it step by step you construct zero power factor or what we can do is that we construct open circuit characteristics curve. We perform the short circuit test. Then we construct the circle with center uh, at O. And then we find out one fixed load, fixed zero power factor load. That is uh, magnitude is so that when you allow full uh, means allow the rated armature voltage when the armature voltage is so when you connect that fixed zero power factor load with your armature terminals that cause a voltage drop of point P so instead of constructing this uh, entire C naught dash that is zero power factor you took a fixed zero power factor load and find out this point P. What is this point P? This point P actually corresponds a voltage uh, that you will get across a zero power factor load when you are allowing flow of full load rated um, uh, sorry rated current through your winding through your field winding through your field winding means through your rotor field winding to ensure induction of rated induced voltage across your stator armature winding now for that when you connect a fixed uh, variable load that draws full armature sorry full uh, rated current then you will get a voltage that is shown by point P. And now it is your task is to slide this circle in such a way that this OFO remain parallel to this line, field line, to this horizontal line. You keep on sliding this and then what you will have you will have the circle reaching to a point just 
a minute let me so here we can draw one thing that it is like we can draw a circle oh, well now obviously you have these two points now what you uh, you should be aware of uh, that you need to slide this O F naught in such a way that it remains parallel and your goal is uh, to slide it in such a way that finally it, you reach to a uh, point here at P. Obviously at that case you do not have uh, this like you started only with O F naught and uh, just wait. yeah it's recording so f naught and reach here at p so here the when your circle reach here the final position will be something like this point let be o dash your circle will be here your your circle will be here now the obvious question that will come that neither O dash coincide with your uh, this OCC card. So how to figure it out? The obvious answer is that one way is that you have to keep this O F not like uh, it is like you are here. Your goal is that your circle this point should always uh, slide in such a way that you reach here at point P right like whenever your circle is here then it should be like this with uh, your this line this O F not say O double dash F not dash should be parallel to this line well and uh, by doing so you reach here now once you reach here then what you can do is that from this point o dash you can draw a line that is uh, just parallel to the initial slope of this line why so i will explain but you draw a line through that o dash and let that line intersect with this let this point be in this intersection then you do what you join this in with p and draw a perpendicular from that in to find Q and in this way you construct the Putia triangle in PQ. Well, uh, so we got this two card. So that is very interesting to note that uh, just let me increase the volume otherwise you will not be able to hear me clearly. So this is uh, like a very interesting things that uh, only from two points we can construct our zero power factor characteristics. So that is all about and that is what you are triangle the vertical side representing the drop due to uh, your reactance voltage drop while the horizontal side representing Armature reaction. So this is the 
very interesting things to note. This is the all about our zero power factor characteristics. Now, uh, from this we can uh, consider another thing here I would like to say is that if you instead of I uh, explicitly mention them, I would like to uh, ask you that what are the means subtle approximations I have taken to construct these zero power factor characteristics. Right. And uh, whatever the value of Potier reactants you will calculate by from the height of this right angle Potier triangle, do you think that this value is actually greater than the uh, original armature leakage reactants or it is uh, smaller than that? That is a uh, very interesting things I would like to hear from you. Uh, now, for any electrical generator, a few uh, different characteristics we can have. And for synchronous machine, uh, these are like we can have open circuit characteristics I have discussed. We can have short circuit characteristics that too I have discussed. Now we can have our short circuit ratio which is also that the saturated short circuit ratio is also uh, reciprocal to per unit value of your synchronous impedance. Then we are having zero power factor characteristics. How to obtain that we have already discussed. Now if you go for a generalized zero power factor characteristics that will be termed as load characteristics. So what is that load characteristics? That load characteristics represent the terminal voltage P as a function of field excitation for a constant load current with a constant power factor angle. So you can say that zero power factor uh, characteristics is also a kind of let me um, just import a few images so that you can get a clear idea about this. So you can understand that this is a typical form of load characteristics where you keep your load current as well as load power factor constant and then you just do some experiment. Interesting things here to note that all this load power factor whatever we discuss it all uh, indicates the external load power factor don't get confused with the fact that uh, this power factor is uh, no load plus armature circuit power factor it is alone the load power factor which is seen by your terminal voltage V it is no way the power factor seen by the induced EMF E. There are three uh, EMF you namely have to handle. One which is uh, which doesn't exist in reality, only exists when you keep the motor terminal open. That is E not open circuit induced EMF. Another one is E that exists uh, or that appears across your armature winding means armature induced voltage E uh, which is also proportional to the resultant MMF FR and the third one is the terminal voltage P. However, these all these three power factors they are seen by your terminal voltage P. The, what we do in load characteristics generally we keep the load current to full load value and vary our load power factors. So here you can see that initially all of them start at short circuit current. However, as uh, you keep on increasing the voltage, there is a voltage rise. We can see the rapid 
realize we can observe across cost theta 1 is equal to 1 means uh, for unity power factor the rate of rise is higher than that which we can get for uh, cost theta more precisely this one is uh, lagging this one is also lagging now if we want to have a leading one then we'll have something like this well they may not be so uh, like once the saturation region they enter their growth will also be uh, stunted but not uh, they will always have a like this this is say cos theta while this may be cos theta to zero leading So this is all about our load characteristics. Now what we can have is that called external characteristics. Where external characteristics, what we do is that we represent V as a function of load current I for a constant power factor and your uh, means constant field current, right? So we have constant power factor and constant field current but the load is uh, varying right so you can see that it is also an interesting curve here when you are having all these lagging leading uh, means these two are actually lagging these two are the lagging cards and these two are the leading cards clearly one the interesting things we can find out the power factor which can ensure zero regulation that will also be an interesting uh, topic uh, how to get that zero regulation obviously when your uh, means the total capacity effect can counter balance the drop across your armature series branch then uh, it is actually uh, if you can recall that cap regulation diagram it is almost like that However, here what we are doing here is keeping our uh, power factor constant and then we are varying our load current from 0 to uh, some rated value and uh, for that we are observing that for here our uh, constants are field current. These two are constant. This is known as external characteristics. I'm 
So all these rigorous uh, characteristics, later on when we will discuss salient pole machine, I may not uh, discuss all of them, but means a few of this curve you can get a direct extension of this concept to that uh, salient pole one also. But however, due to that saliency of proto structure, you need to consider a few extra factors or a few extra factors will appear. However, this fundamental understanding what we had during our transformer that leading current means negative regulation. Here also you can see that when for leading current, uh, if you increase the value of current, when current is zero, there is no regulation, but when you are increasing leading current, then they are resulting in the negative regulation. Whenever the, this curve, this two uh, curves, the upper two curves, they are for leading regulation and clearly they indicate that your uh, means tandem voltage uh, is higher than your induced voltage or your armature uh, induced voltage. What is your armature induced voltage? Armature induced voltage is your uh, this voltage. Provided you uh, maintain uh, that one, but it is uh, like it's very difficult to deal with that, and we are getting different different help. Like uh, well, so all these uh, we have studied. Now we'll go to uh, the characteristics that is known as a regulation curve. What is that regulation card is that uh, very simple thing. Regulation card is yeah. this one you can see it's clear uh, that in regulation card what we do we uh, keep the means our it is a variation between the current or the power factor and the field current like our target is to keep the terminal voltage constant and that voltage should be equal to our rated voltage now for that what we do we vary the power factor either power factor or current not both means we never vary the, uh, both of them simultaneously we vary either uh, these two like either power factor or current so if we vary the uh, current then how we are varying uh, we keep in the power factor constant and what we are doing we are trying to like here you can see that when we increase the value of current for maintaining constant voltage uh, when from cos theta is equal to 1, when we are going to cos theta is equal to 0.8, we need more field current to circulate through our rotor winding so that we can have a stronger field MMM to maintain constant terminal voltage. Similarly, here it is more interesting that this is for here our load current is constant however uh, we are plotting this IF as a function of our power factor our objective is to keep terminal voltage constant so what we can see that when we are having leading power factor then we need actually a smaller amount of current that is required uh, during open circuit like uh, if it is uh, say 1 ampere current was required to maintain open circuit rated voltage then with a leading power factor load we need uh, say 0.6 ampere current flowing through our field winding to maintain the same rated terminal voltage across our winding but for lagging we need a higher value of uh, field current and that is why we get this typical card here what is our constant constant is terminal voltage V
what are variable here uh, constant is i independent variable is power factor so dependent variable is i if and here uh, your constant is power factor independent variable load current or armature current ia and dependent variable if this is known as regulation characteristics so let me ask you one more question that if we have a card like this so for these two one is black card another one is blue card what do you think which machine is having higher value of SCR and uh, why? Why do you think so? So I hope my question is clear that which machine is having higher value of CR and why? Now we have already discussed EMF method for load calculation. There are another few methods that we need to consider here is one of them is MMF method. What is MMF method? In case of EMF method, what we do, that is very simple thing, we just try to represent one physically existing MMF so that is leakage MMF and armature reaction MMF by two virtual EMF. And in case of MMF method, we just do the reverse. What is that reverse? We do it like instead of uh, having MMF, what we do, we represent it got, by uh, physical EMF by a non-existing MMF. How? Let us see. Let me draw the feather diagram first. This is our V. Then this is our I. We have I R then we join these two although we uh, do not mention about this EMA uh, quite often uh, what you will get by adding this one let it be e2 that is the induced voltage across your terminal voltage plus drop across your armature uh, resistance this is a physical EMA. although we do not mention about it but it is a physical em now what we have we have another drop that is JIXL and for that we are having an EMF induced EMF and also
so well once we get this e2 what we can do is that for this e2 first of all for v what we can draw is that for v v is the terminal voltage and for this v we can uh, imagine of existence of a virtual MMF. See the difference between your first method and this one. In the first method, we try to represent physical MMF, uh, EMF, uh, sorry, MMF by EMFs. That is why it was EMF method. Now, for V, we are logically assuming there exist here also we are considering linear relationship MMF that is leading V by an angle of 90 degree and it is magnitude wise proportional to V and leading V by an angle of 90 degree then obviously for this E2 we will get another one that is our R1 like what we can have here is that we can uh, for this IR drop we can assume that we are having a small MMF is exist there uh, so finding out this small MMF uh, is also very easy for us this is uh, proportional to this one and let this be minus a x and when you join these two you will find if r which is actually Just a bit. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, I, I just made a mistake. Uh, just a minute. Yeah. So we are having if R1. Now from that we can have uh, we can draw another MMF that is perpendicular to this one. F2 how we can draw it just by drawing a line that is uh, exactly in the elements V plus I R so this for this I R we are trying to figure out uh, even if that is perpendicular to this higher vector and we get this one so when we join we get Two, right? Now, what we can do 
is that very interesting things that uh, can be done here is like then we think about that if this is if two or j i excel again i would like to say that whatever i have drawn using this uh, solid saffron line they do not exist in reality so this one it's actually can be represented by a physical mmf that is present here f2 is a virtual mmf but what which one is physical mmf physical mmf is an mmf that is leading this one by a certain angle say right now once you get this minus x what you will have here if you join them you will get if r if r is also uh, physically present mm uh, mm so from that physically present mm if r what more you can do is that now with this fr you can add just a minute Basically what I am trying to say that is very simple thing like uh, if you try to write it for EMF equation just a minute let me explain to you. See here, here actually what you are having you are having uh, from this if you yeah this is the circuit diagram so it is quite clear that you are having e naught once you subtract minus j i x a s you are having e and from e once you subtract minus j i x l then according to my second diagram you will have e2 and when you subtract e2 minus ir you will have v so for this e2 and v these two are physical existing mmf sorry emf what we are doing we are representing them by MMFs while your if 2 is a virtual MMF however with that virtual MMF let me draw the real MMF using lines so if we uh, write emf equation like emf equation you can write f not minus a that gives us f r now from f r minus your a x that gives us f2 f2 minus 
some virtual component that gives us our your say fr1 or frp let us let it be frp so what is frp let me draw the lines clearly then you will understand the virtual mmfs are drawn in blue ink first of all there doesn't exist any virtual mmf sorry any physical mmf that is responsible for induction of v v never induced across your any winding that are some other voltages get induced and if you discard the drops then you will get v in that way e2 is a uh, more or less and available induced voltage however for this p we draw a mmf that is virtually existing so with that frv we add ir so for that high r you can always have a component this way yeah so with this you need to add a r minus a r so once you do that minus a r um, okay let it be uh, this way only you will get uh, there will be um, um, just a minute let me just uh, align this equations So you can directly establish relation with your uh, EMF method also. So this one is FRV. Then from that FRV you are having minus AR. So what about this minus AR? Minus AR is such a voltage that you need to sorry that uh, such an mmf that you should add with frp so this one will result to these two part do not exist that is why i have written drawn them using blue now that will give us another uh, virtual MMM uh, that is F2 No, one thing we can say that F2 is a physical MMF. Yeah, F2 is physically present there very much. If F2 is present with F2, 
if you consider ax the drop then this one will become and what you will have you will have if r now if r is in 90 degree with e then from if r if you further subtract minus a that will give you if not now here what we assume is that all of them are like all of these are like all of these uh, things are purely you can say that they are uh, they are something that is uh, what to say like instead of yeah here when we have to measure the regulation instead of measuring it in terms of two voltage drop obviously from if not you can again apply the proportional relationship to figure out your E naught that is lagging if not by an angle 90 degree and you can have your E naught here so that is the way but when we need to calculate our regulation from MMF method so what we do in case of MMF method we do everything in terms of our MMF. So, every MMF, uh, we find out MMF and from MMF, we find out the corresponding value of EMF uh, to figure out the amount of regulation. So, although your regulation will be, eventually the regulation will be same like E0 minus V by V, what was there for EMF method. But here, this E0 is calculated based on this F0. While in case of your EMF method, the E0 calculation was based on something, uh, few EMFs, those are non existent in nature. In some book, what you will observe that they made an attempt to neglect the armature resistance, uh, but I am um, means I do not like that armature resistance drop to be neglected, right? So that is why. Uh, I have drawn this one. This is slightly different from what you will get commonly in your other books. But I, I just insist you people to means you please use this one because this is the most accurate one, not the whatever you will uh, get in other uh, means book where they uh, describe MMF method 
Although all these methods have lost their apple because as I said they are not means in modern days the regulation is not that very important we have our own method and we can do it it is not important for us right so that is all about your MMA method Now, uh, just a minute, hold on, it is uh, doing some, well, so that's all, um, mm -hmm. cylindrical rotor machine, one important thing I forgot to mention that this angle, that is the angle between E0 and P. This is known as power angle or torque angle and we often call them delta of the synchronous machine. In our next video we will discuss on your saline pole synchronous machine. So, with that, let me stop the discussion here.